Million Yun Woman is actually one of the best representations of the inner struggle of a writer I've seen, and that makes it all the more frustrating to watch. It had a lot of potential to make some deeper observations. Instead, it's happy dealing with surface level drama. This is a Japanese Netflix original, 12 episodes, about 25 minutes each. It's about an unsuccessful 30 year old writer named Shin Machima, who finds himself living with five beautiful young ladies. We don't know why they are there. There was a letter with contents unknown that convinced them to show up. There are rules in which they have to follow regarding how they can interact and what they can reveal. Oh, and Shin also gets a million yen per month for rent from each of these ladies. I haven't seen or heard anything like this show. There's a lot of mystery. The world they inhabit is filled with interesting things like a fax machine that prints out death threats, the apartment that somehow manages to comfortably house all of them in the city. It's equal parts funny, melodrama, and some dark stuff, and the mixed tones don't always flow that well. The first episode is good because it's fresh, and it ends with a big reveal regarding his relationship with a family member, and it sets up the expectation that this thing that happened will be a big part of what's to come, but we don't really get a chance to explore this relationship for a while, even though it's very interesting. It's kind of just dropped in favor of more mystery, and we're given close to zero meaningful clues about what's going on until very late in the series. I don't think a series should merely rest on the big reveal, and that's kind of what this feels like as you're watching. Now, you can successfully do this if the characters are interesting enough to keep the audience hooked, but I found myself growing impatient because most of them are not that interesting. I did like a few of them though. Minami played by Rila Fukushima. She's the only character that calls Shin out for being kind of a wuss and a bitch. And she's also naked all the time, but I barely noticed. Shin's Asian friend is also a pretty interesting character. He's very supportive, but you can tell he's also doing certain things for himself. There's an antagonistic writer who's already very successful, and I really like this dynamic between him and Shin. The manga Hikaru no Go managed to make the game Go look really intense, and in this show, a battle between novelists becomes pretty intense, and that's a cool idea. A lot of stuff happens, there's some tragedy, it gets intense, but the whole time we're just kind of plagued by the question of what the hell is going on? Okay, so now I wanna talk about what makes this show special and especially frustrating, and a minor thematic spoiler alert. This series is actually a very good representation of the inner struggle of a writer. Every character seems to represent a different aspect. We have Shin, our protagonist, who writes from the heart, who's actually very good, but unsuccessful, which is what every aspiring writer thinks they are, or at least wants to be. If only someone would recognize my greatness. There's the antagonist writer who has success, but clearly has lost a part of his soul in the process. That's something that writers, as they're finding success, will have to deal with. They have to compromise their artistic vision in order to satisfy the business portion of the art. We have the woman around him whom he forms attachments with and he feels responsible for, just like the characters an author comes up with. It's a very on-the-nose representation of this struggle because everyone adores Shin, and if he represents the author and the woman are just characters, he's their creator. Him being their creator is the best explanation I can come up with regarding how much these girls are enamored with him. I think there's a lot of potential in this idea of a writer's struggle, but instead of exploring this theme in a nuanced way, it's written more like a writer's wet dream. This show feels like just a wish fulfillment fantasy of every lonely struggling writer. This is what initially intrigued me and also what took me out of the story because as opposed to seeing each character for who they are, oftentimes I felt like I was staring at the singular mind the writer who simply is telling me his fantasy. This bizarre feeling of looking straight into the eyes of the person behind the show has a lot to do with the personality of the main character, Shin. It's basically non-existent. He shows little emotion, is pushed around, and is literally one of the most uncharismatic characters I have seen. So it's easy to project yourself into his position. He's Barely even there. So what do the girls see in him? He's an unsuccessful novelist. That just means he's unemployed. Is liking him part of the rules? Some of the girls' affection towards him are due to external factors, but for the most part, they all are genuinely into him. Is it because of his bangs? Because they are cute. Or, or is it this expression? Huh? 
I'm not jealous, you're jealous. I think if his character simply had more agency over his life, as is, he's kind of just floating along and it's hard to root for him. I do realize maybe it's a cultural thing. In America, we wanna take matters into our own hands and in Japan, guys are more passive and it's okay. Also, a lot of male characters in anime especially are this type of guy who's bumbly and nice-ish and just finds himself around attractive women all the time. I guess when I see live action though, I just expect more. And back Back to the girl characters. I think it is nice that we do learn about each of them and they each do have one clear thing motivating them or something that defines them. But we don't really have enough moments that flesh them out beyond that one trait or thing. I'm glad I watched this show because it is very different and it sparks important tough conversations like what would I do if I had five hot Japanese chicks living with me? Seriously though, there are actually great moral questions that are posed and I wish they explored these themes more. This show had so much potential. It just kind of meandered in the middle and didn't have interesting enough characters. If you're a fan of Japanese dramas, I would give it a chance, but for the regular American audience, it might feel too foreign. If you wanna see a great interweaving story about a bunch of women, I would highly, highly recommend Big Little Lies on HBO. The commercials don't look that great, but trust me, it's phenomenal. I give Million Yen Woman a C plus. I was really hovering between that and a B minus because it is so original. It just didn't resonate with me. So if you're bored, I would say go ahead and enjoy that first episode. It is quite good. Just be prepared for some frustration if you continue on. That's all I have guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed that video, please consider liking and subscribing and I'll see you guys next time.